opposed to a year ago, I think that uh, both teams will be better than they were at this point a year ago. Uh, in terms of the type of play, I think we're quite similar. I, uh, they have greater uh, big play potential than we do in the uh, form of Golden Richards, for one. He has great speed. Uh, other than that, I think it'll boil down to who can play consistently, uh, down by down throughout the, the 60 minutes. Are you satisfied with your physical condition and the way the squad is coming along? Uh, physically, I think we're in great shape. Uh, maybe the best we've ever been in. What about your offense? Are you going to try to do anything fancy or just do some simple things? No, we're, we're uh, going to try to uh, keep it simple and execute well. Uh, we haven't uh, changed our offense a great deal from a year ago. We feel that uh, how we do it's more important than what we do. Seems to me that's been your philosophy, hasn't it, throughout your career? Yes, we, we have tried to avoid uh, making it complicated in terms of a high number of plays. We've added a couple plays that we didn't have, but uh, we're mostly concerned with striving for execution. Uh, Mrs. Viettel, does your husband often take you for a walk in this kind of weather? Sometimes. Not often. We don't have this weather very often. What do you think about this? Apparently it's not bothering you much. No, I've lived here nearly all my life, so they don't really bother me. Lloyd, what do y'all do in a situation like this? Just mess around. Go for a walk on the boardwalk? <laughs> yes, sir. I take it you're not planning on leaving for the storm? Oh, no, sir. No. The South Campus administration has responded to the heads of the four groups which purportedly submitted the letter to members of the Board of Trustees and to certain administrators on Wednesday. Many of the points advanced in the letter already were under consideration by the administration, and indeed many of the objectives are college objectives. It should be made clear, though, that the college is not considering the dismissal of any individual, as suggested by the letter, Two, the college is in no position to submit to deadlines as requested therein. Jerry, I think uh, they're kind of going back. I think when we first started in professional football, they played a lot of zones, and I think they went through a transition period where they played a lot of man for man, and then uh, now I think they're going back to the zone defenses. Uh, when you play teams like the Cowboys with such great speed and so many good wide receivers uh, as they've had in the past, it's just difficult to, to isolate yourself man for man all over the field. So I think most clubs are, are going back to a zone to compensate for the varied uh, formations that you see now, triple wings, double wings, sometimes three wide receivers, and 
it's difficult to work in all your defenses in a man-to-man, and so most teams, I think, are, are going back to the zone. Anything you're going to plan for the Cowboys tomorrow night? Well, I don't think uh, we'll do a whole lot uh, uh, different than we did last year when we played them. Uh, uh, hope that we'll get a pretty good pass rush. I think that uh, the Cowboys are an improved football team since we played them in preseason last year. And, of course, in the regular season, they were uh, were just making their big move to uh, going on to the championship. And uh, uh, they look like a great football team. I think we're going to play them, uh, try to be very sound against them, not let them have any easy, quick, uh, free touchdowns, and uh, hope that we can stay on the field with them. These representatives of the citizens of Dallas and these organizations in past activities of the board have in certain cases been both verbally and physically abused. Meetings have been asked for with the Dallas city and county governments and the Office of Economic Opportunity. These are the sponsors of the Dallas County Community Action Committee so that we can now reevaluate what must be done because of the recent board activities, which indicate that the board cannot function as it presently exists. The board is becoming the problem, while the problems of the poor and the interests of the citizens of Dallas, who support this indirectly through their tax money and their representatives, are being hampered and abused. It is time now that the sponsors of this agency take some action to correct this problem which is hampering the activity of a Dallas County Community Action Committee. No help, as described here, uh, would be an overall overriding, a cohesive or um, uh, coordinating agency, not taking the place of any one of these agencies. We have a fragmented approach to the problem at this time. Proposing a coordinated agency, similar to your uh, Council of Governments, which is a method of coordinating the activities of government agencies, uh, and there are other such coordinating bodies uh, which uh, act both in government areas or civic and business areas. Right, I've been, uh, you know, looking forward to starting this year, and uh, been practicing pretty hard this fall, so I'm kind of ready to start. Would you care to comment on Coach Boyle's comments on your ability? He says you make people miss you. Now, just how do you do that? <laughs> I see a big lineman coming. I just try to avoid him. I, I try to uh, more than running over people. I try to avoid people more. I, I work on, you know, taking certain cuts and getting my iron blocks, so I try to avoid him as much as I can. Well, you have some big offensive linemen uh, since you're moving more to a, say, I'll say a, well, the triple option I with the pro passing combined. Will this help you in your uh, breaks through the holes in the line, perhaps with the bigger fellas? Oh, yeah, it's, it's going, we have a great line, a real big line, so they, they're going to open holes a lot larger than they did last year, most likely. So this this will help me a lot in the, you know, with the holes and running in the line. And you'll be running back uh, kickoffs for the Razorbacks, too, this year, will you not? All right, I hope so. Uh, we, we're going to change our returns some this year. Maybe we can get some longer returns in. What gave you the idea to build this one-man band? Well, after playing a few years in a rhythm dance band, I decided to retire and just 
So my own amusement, I built this one-man band, you know. How long did it take you to build this model here? Well, actually, I was on it for eight or ten months, and I finally got it the way I wanted it. I tore up five or six models. You have it patented started. now? Yes, sir. What is this other model here that you have? Uh, what does it do? Oh, this is, uh, I call this the Forest Park after Fort Worth. You know, it's uh, really a two-wheel cart that you push around like an organ grinder. It does the uh, same thing as this one does? It does the same thing, yeah. You either push it around like an organ grinder or set it up on a pedestal or something and crank it by hand. And I would say that uh, I wouldn't advise anyone to try to pull this thing because the music might come out in reverse. It's better to be pushed. <laughs> Looking out at the ocean, listening to the wind whistle past the microphone and talking about a storm. That was just exactly 11 years ago this morning. The storm that time was called Hurricane Carla, and it was a significantly worse storm. When Hurricane Carla blew in, people fled from the coast by the thousands. Last night, when Hurricane Fern blew in, people stayed out on piers and fished, some of them all night. The storm stopped just after it got to Galveston last night, the winds reached about 55 or 60 miles an hour here on Galveston Island at 1045, lasted for only about 20 minutes, and then calmed down. No one seemed to know for a great length of time where the storm was going. Then the hurricane spotter planes out over the Gulf decided she had stalled, that she might stay there, and that it might rain indefinitely here at Galveston. As a matter of fact, just after midnight last night, the storm began... What you see is the back half of Hurricane Fern. Yesterday, she blew in at a...
that's for sure. We have a coach, Hank Stram, that his philosophy is win, and win every time that you go out on the football field because that's really the name of the game, that you're out there to play a contest, so why not try to win it? I know a lot of people don't take preseason games too seriously. At least they say that. Now, whether they really mean it or not, I'm not sure, but I know as a football player that if I have my choice, I'd rather win than lose. What is there about you that makes you the best quarterback in pro football, according to Stram? You're so accurate. Uh, what's your secret that nobody else has? Oh, there's, there really isn't any mystery about the success of a quarterback, I don't think. He has to have people to protect for him. If he doesn't have time to throw, you might as well forget it. He has to have people that are capable of getting in the open so you can throw the ball to them, and also the ability to catch it. And unfortunately, through the years with Kansas City and way back to the Dallas Texan days, I've been on the football teams that have had outstanding personnel, and uh, that's been the reason why I've had the success that I've had. It gets a bit hazardous at times, though, doesn't it, like it opened last year? <laughs> it gets hazardous every time you step on that field. And my, at least, uh, from my respect, I think it's hazardous because they're so big today, they're strong, they're fast, they're faster than I am. It used to be that I'd be able to get out of their way and maybe jump out of bounds, but they're fast enough now where they can catch me before I can get out of bounds. And last year's uh, fiasco in Kansas City when we took on the Oakland Raiders, so you have to really be alert for all situations. I know Ben Davidson hit me late and that started a, a big brawl that uh, possibly could have cost us the, the opportunity to get into the playoffs last year. But football's a violent game and uh, you have to expect some violence when you get out there on the field. What do you think will be the difference in a game tomorrow night since both clubs employ multiple offenses and they're really quite similar? Well, the score naturally is going to be the difference. Dallas has got a great team. Uh, I think they're solid in all phases of the game of football, offensively and defensively in their kicking game. So they've put it all together. They've done it before. They've, they've been taking some bad raps over the years. People are saying, well, they can't win the big games. Well, you have to be an outstanding team to even get to the big games. And uh, the difference in the ball game tomorrow is going to be the team that gets uh, maybe a couple of breaks here or there that are under, unexpected. And it's going to be the difference in the ball game is going to be the team that goes out and plays hard-nosed football and makes a few mistakes. I think it's a uh, tremendously important, constructive plan. I think it's a very humane plan, and I think it will uh, uh, do a great deal to reinforce uh, the continuation of, of downtown Dallas as a focal point. Last evening, we saw the manifestations of it in uh, one main place, and it was very impressive. I was very pleased to see in one main place that the under-street passageways move into open areas open to the sky. This is in contrast to Houston where I think they're all, at the present time, completely underground. I think for it to work, it's necessary at many points that, to uh, come to uh, places where the underground opens to the sky and to places of interest. I think uh, Thanksgiving Square offers a remarkable opportunity to reinforce and strengthen the whole idea, and I look forward to a very interesting development in that regard. I do think that <clears throat> as it matures, that uh, perhaps there'll be a certain simplification of it, uh, we found in Philadelphia, working over many years on projects of this sort, that the form is continually changing <clears throat> and always, I think, in the direction of becoming simpler and more clear. It's uh, very important when you deal with uh, underground uh, developments to <clears throat> always keep your sense of orientation, and that's facilitated by making the plan as simple as possible.
the objective of the American and Australian governments when they embarked on the operations in Vietnam was to uh, help a country which we saw as being directly the victim of aggression, aggression from North Vietnam. And the judgment of the United States government, which uh, is shared by the Australian government, is that now the government and the people of South Vietnam have a reasonable chance of stay standing on their own legs. Uh, it was never uh, the intention, I think, of our governments that we should forever be engaged in fighting. Uh, the uh, objective of the operations was to give the people of Vietnam a reasonable chance <coughs> to defend themselves, uh, to develop uh, the political and other institutions that uh, enabled uh, some expression of uh, the will of the people there. And we believe that that stage has been reached. And so now the uh, Americans and the Australians are withdrawing. Uh, we're withdrawing in a, an orderly manner. It's not a uh, helter-skelter withdrawal. And it's uh, being done in such a way that the government of South Vietnam is able to take over. The course of the American system of equal opportunity. Now, I'm fortunate to be president of 20th Century Fox, an international corporation. This has been the case with millions of other immigrants who achieve even greater success than we. Therefore, the capitalistic system, or if you please, the private enterprise system, should not be criticized, but should be carefully analyzed, because otherwise America would never have been in existence. Готовы, э, так сказать, для себя конспекты столкновения в другом плане. Ну вот мой брат Грек, он сбил меня с моего конспекта. I have been thinking in my mind of speaking along different lines, but my brother Greek here has changed uh, my thoughts on the matter. Echoes of We Won't Buzz, currently being heard across the country, has brought a number of concerned citizens to Dallas for convention in hopes of formulating plans for action at the federal level. One of the speakers scheduled to speak here today is Mrs. Irene McCabe, the anti-busing proponent from Pontiac, Michigan. I ask Mrs. McCabe that in view of violence in recent days in Pontiac, Michigan, has her organization done anything to discourage violence by Pontiac citizens? Yes, we are encouraging citizens to work within the framework of the law because we have two suits started, one in federal court and one in the state court. And this is exactly what we consider working within the framework of the law. We do not consider the judicial edict to be law. Texas has been fortunate in the sense that it has not experienced widespread violence. However, a couple of isolated incidents in Texas cities have occurred. I asked Dr. Mitchell Young of Texarkana, coordinator of this effort, if this has become a black versus white issue. This is not a racial issue. It is not a southern problem. This is a national uh, public school crisis that has arisen because of federal intervention. And we're going to work throughout this country with citizens of every ethnic background to work together to stop federal control of education. Clay Smothers, one of the leaders of the anti-busing movement in Dallas, left this morning for San Juan, Puerto Rico and the Governor's Conference. I asked Clay Smothers exactly what he planned to accomplish at that conference. Yeah. I'm making an effort to unite governors, uh, don't know how many I'll be able to get, 15, 20, 25, to go en masse to President Nixon 
I think in the end, President Nixon is the, uh, be the only person uh, who can really do something for us on buses. You know, this is a little bit noisier library than most. What makes it different is it's the opening of the first library that Balk Springs has ever had, the first real one it ever had in its whole history. And it was a hard, long-fought battle. It's a $17,000 structure that was started several years ago. It caused political hassle and dissension within the city council and within the city, but the funds were raised. Today, a big three-mile-long parade started the events that started the ribbon-cutting, more or less, for the new library. The parade lasted for several hours and culminated here in front of the library. There are many speakers at today's celebration. County Judge Lou Sterrett had these words to say. I want to commend the many, many people that have participated in bringing this marvelous building about and, and the new library. You know, it's been a lot of fun down on the commissioner's court along with the commissioners, watching the uh, bulk frames go through growing pains, but you're on the way now. All the troubles this little city has had may not be over yet, but at least there is a form of solidarity with the opening of this new library. This is Carl Mayo, Channel 8 News, on the move in Balk Springs. syndication now you have right. we have about 25 27 NBC stations and 26 CBS stations and the rest of them in the independent stations mm -hmm. you're going to be carried in this market uh, yes I was so very glad to uh, to hear that uh, WSAA uh, channel 8 is going to carry up at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. and that's real good news for me because this is a station that I have known and followed even when they were on radio years ago. Mm -hmm. They were a strong station they used to carry up to North Dakota where I live. Mm